In early spring, spotted salamanders leave their sites of hibernation and make their way to vernal pools. Those pools formed in early spring with the help of snowmelt, and here they mate and lay their eggs. The eggs are often deposited on branches which are projecting upwards towards the surface, which will benefit the algae mentioned presently in the photosynthesis that they perform. This is interesting because the egg masses have been known to be associated with algae, and this has been known for more than a century. In fact, the name of the algae is Oophelia amblystomatis, meaning the algae which loves salamander eggs. And it may be that this algae is only found in association with the eggs and bodies of salamanders, or at the very least, this is its primary site of occurrence. It has recently been discovered, however, that this is not just an example of a symbiosis, a relationship in which both organisms benefit, but an endosymbiosis where one organism actually inhabits the cells of the other. This eukaryotic alga actually exists inside the salamander cells where they both benefit. The cells of the salamander can provide its waste products the carbon dioxide and nitrogenous waste, which then the algae can use for photosynthesis and with the nitrogen, the synthesis of proteins. In contrast, the algae are producing both sugar and oxygen, which can then benefit the salamander larvae, as suggested by the occurrence of mitochondria uh, from the salamander cells associated with these algal cells. How this is managed and how the immune uh, systems of the salamanders tolerate these algae are currently under investigation. But it's significant that this is the first known example of a vertebrate endosymbiosis with the eukaryotic alga Oophelia living inside the cells and eggs of the spotted salamander.